Welcome to the bold analysis, ladies and gentlemen. I want to start by this analysis by a fact check. Do someone have a photo, a video, or any story published in any website where two women were allegedly raped in Madare during mass action? Let's be very honest. Kimani Chunga is giving us what according to Miss Just Side Shows. If you can provide that kindly, I mean, I'll be so much willing to. I'll really be willing to cover that story, even if mainstream cannot cover it. Because that is what I, I have listened to. I, I, in all the other stories that I've had, I've, got, I've listened to that one. And that's an allegation that has come. And personally, I have tried. I made an initiative of calling, um, reaching out to some people within Madari. Yes, actually I spoke to some three church elders there who they have also told me they have tried to verify there is nothing like that. So I think we need to fact check. So that one, categorically, if someone has evidence, someone should come and challenge me. But there is nothing like that. Ladies and gentlemen, um, looking at what is happening, and I will not want to take, um, I was looking at the reaction that has emerged from Riga de Gashagwa when he attended um, an event in, is it Kogosho? Is it Kogosho? What, what, what? It's a, what? Let me get the name of the school. Uh, in a school known as. Um, mm -hmm. In a school in Madeira, I'm, I'm, I'm going, I'm yet to get the name, Kangosho Secondary School in Madeira, Nyeri County, where he responded to um, the claims on uh, what happened in this country. Now, I just want, I just have a question to you, dear members. The question is this. Is the problem, the fact that um, Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, farm was invaded and the other places were also attacked. Is the problem skewed coverage or the fact that Uhuru Kenyatta's farm was invaded? Let's, let's be very honest here. Then, um, I'm asking because Kimani Chungwa appeared in Citizen and he said that there is a skewed coverage of destructions. The media is not saying, and that's why he was creating the stories about the rape. And that's why I started by saying, we need to fact check that. I think mainstream media issues need to fact check. And also they need to fact check whether a police uh, land cruiser was banned in, 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 um, in Kawangware. I've tried to check. I'm not even seeing the NPS talking about it. We need to be, we need to do a lot of fact checking because now that's what the journalists that's what the journalism uh, dictates. They're saying that the media are covering, there is a skewed coverage, and they're asking why the media is taking a lot of attention on invasion on Uhuru Kenyatta's farm, but the others have not, and in fact, they compared it with the Kibra one. Listen to this tired line by Rikade. Since he started these demonstrations, no business has taken place in the Nairobi business district. Property has been destroyed. The government has a constitutional mandate to protect life and property of the rich and the powerful. Equally, the same government has an obligation to protect the life and property of ordinary Kenyans property being destroyed and the instigation of the rich and the powerful. The government will protect both the rich and the powerful and also the ordinary Kenyans. And we want to ask those rich and powerful people to know that getting property is a difficult thing. They may demean these small people because their property is nothing to them. But it's a hard-worn sweat they should respect the property of the ordinary Kenyans. You people of the media, I have seen you carry a lot of narrative 
on property of the rich, which is also okay, because they too require protection, and they must be protected. And nobody should destroy anybody's property, whether you are rich or ordinary. But I also want you to take time to tell us a story of the church that was burned in Kibra. Tell us the story of the mosque that was destroyed in Kibra. Tell us about the supermarket whose goods for 20 million were looted. You guys of the press are quiet when the property of ordinary people is being looted and destroyed. But when something for an, one single ordinary rich person is touched, you are all over the place. We are saying you should cover both. Nobody should destroy property, either from the rich or the poor. The outgoing president did not want any single leader to emerge in this region. Kiongozi alikuwa kitoa kichwa wanagonga. Sasa naona wameambia watu yazimio. Ati wampiga huyu kemani ichomo. Now, something is shocking me about this story. The UDA people are actually blaming media for allegedly skewed coverage of the mass action. And in fact, they're saying in terms of destruction, they're asking why people are paying a lot of attention to what happened there at, and not the rest of the places. Number two, the Deputy President Gashogi is saying that this is a choreographed or this is a strategy to finish the political clout of Kimani Chumwa. Because in the region, he is the second most senior person order of hierarchy. Now, I'm just asking, I'm just trying to find, I'm just asking myself a simple question. There is a clip that went viral where Ijung himself, he's, he said, and by the way, the reason why the public was trying, was asking Ichung more questions, and in my tribe there's some, there is a say, there is a word that says, Jerry Choringo Malaga, as in, you run, those who have done mistakes, they run without even knowing and chasing after them. So, when it was a coincidence that that uh, invasion happened, days after he threatened that something like that would happen. That was the only question. And you know, so I wonder, according to Rige de Geshagwa, is that the problem now is that these leaders are being attacked by Kenyans. And I think it has been both sides. It's not about us. So did UDA or rather, did Azimio choreograph that <laughs> you know, did they choreograph invasion at Uru Kenyatta's place? And after that, so was it to attack, to, why him? You know, I'm like, even if you need to twist and spin the narrative, but even spinning needs some, you know, you need, there is a logical reasoning to spinning. You don't, you can't just spin for the sake of spinning. I know it's a strategy and it's political narratives are is just to spin in, in defense of Ichuma. But then we need to agree that Uhuru Migei Kenyatta, a former president, who is the fourth president of the Republic of Kenya, is not an ordinary Kenyan. And let me answer this question clearly by telling you, dear. But in newsroom, there is something called news prominence. If the house of an MP is raided, and the house of, uh, and my house is raided, if people are in the newsroom and they're making a decision and they want to dispatch reporters, what will make <laughs> the reason why, where, where do you think the newsroom will go, the reporters will be sent? They'll be sent to the house of the MP because it's a prominent, you know. And I'm not saying that others are lesser. Who is a former president? Check BBC. Check the other international media. Why did they cover that and not rest? So this is the question. The point here is clearly, and let's be very honest, I don't think the problem is on coverage. No, we, we, are, we are taking the, we are spinning it wrongly. 
and I think we should not even entertain such a twist. Whether it is covered or not, but it happened. And look at the dynamics, their political dynamics in Uhuru Kenyatta's invasion. I have seen it being compared to Kibera. When the encounter, the two churches that were burnt in Kibera happened, it was in the night. So who is this journalist that went there at night to cover it? Compare that to the Northlands attack, which happened in broad daylight. When road users were taking photos and videos of what happened, the whole day there was a team, there are people who are there conducting, doing that heinous thing. So compare that. But then, is it really true that media has not given coverage to the Kibera skirmishes? Is it really true? I think that matter has been reported exhaustively to the public. The only thing that politicians must agree is the public is speaking what is of key interest. That's it. I am not saying that the fact that two churches were burnt in Kibera is a light, is a small thing. And of course, even today, Raila held meetings with these leaders, the Nubian community and the other people committed from that area. It has been trying to manage what happened in Kibera. It was controlled. The same way he also visited there, nonetheless. But he has not visited his place, Spectra International. So what are, we, what are we talking about here? We're talking about a situation where we should not focus on, and I think it's wrong, it's a wrong spin to say that because they have happened, the problem is on coverage. The problem is not on coverage. The problem here is it has happened. It is about the happening. It is about the destruction. And I think um, the public needs to be very sensitive and very, you need clarity of mind. Do you want to tell me that the whole thing was choreographed to target individuals? Is it a coincidence? You know, so if it is, uh, if it is, if it was to target kingpinship, so do you want to tell me that uh, Uhuru Kenyatta is fighting Kimani Chungwa to suppress Kimani Chungwa? Because Kimani Chungwa is a member of parliament and is the majority leader in the National Assembly. Sir Mount Kenya is number two years. Do you think it was planned to fight him? For what? Is Uhuru Kenyatta seeking another elective office? You know, I think the spin is not going to work. What we need to agree here is, is that we need to protect property. And there is that which, and, and in fact, uh, mm -hmm. politicians should ask themselves, fine, the other distractions that have happened, Mwindu Mwindu Mwusi lost his staff. There is a, a, a hardware in Kibera that was also touched. And the other, of course, those ones I've, I've seen. But why is it really that the invasion there is taking a lot of attention? Mm -hmm. There's, you could, you, you know, in Ili Ata, Ata, and the way it was done was dramatic. And let me tell them for free if this invasion in Netherlands would be done at night and Kenyans regard it as a robbery attack, no one would even pay attention. But the fact that some people are there for more than five hours and do such an, an illegal thing without intervention of the security officers is what paints the picture that there is more than what catches the eye. If, you know, true that um, I've seen the political narrative is that both are properties, whether it belongs to who and, and so on, both are properties. And I totally agree that in terms of property ownership, but I do Now, if you want to tell the voters there that Uhuru Kenyatta is not special, and so the, the narrative started that he's taking a humble pie because he's sponsoring a Zimio uh, um, uh, protest, and so he should also, even if he undergoes through the pitch. Before this invasion, that was the narrative that was there. So what has changed? What is making it difficult just to face 
your supporters and tell your supporters that don't sympathize with Uhuru. What has happened to him is because of what we were saying. Why don't you take that? I want to tell you what's happening. There is a situation where you do something and uh, something happens and you feel, you know, I'm, I'm going to win. They lost it in public. They lost it. I can tell you, even the strong people, even those who support <laughs> William Bruton Mountain, no one will support destruction of property. Because when it comes to property ownership, everyone has a property. Iwe nani, iwe governor, iwe senator, iwe. Everyone has a property. So in terms of property ownership, I think on that one, it faced a backlash. And so, just about the spin. So, if you want to tell me that if a property, because there's lots of property, the, 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 the church is burnt in Kibera and there is this one burnt in uh, uh, um, uh, invasion in Uruguay, do you want to tell me, you want to compare the two and say, because the two has happened, so it's normal. Are Kenyans wrong to condemn the Northland city attack? Simply because they are not talking about the Nubian one. Okay, is the is our only fault condemning what happened? <laughs> I we need to be very I think we need to be very serious. On this one, the spin is not there. It has fallen flat. Simply because you cannot blame the media for something that has happened. It has already happened. It's not Kenyan media only that reported it. Even international media, of all the things that happened on Monday, they captured that one. And since Monday, the Northland City invasion has been trending in media. So I think let's just take responsibility and protect people's property. Because on this one, it fell flat. I don't believe it's about going after individuals. No, I, I don't believe on that. Probably, maybe I'm convinced beyond that mm -hmm. someone can engineer invasion and all that. I, I, I'm not buying it. That one I'm not buying.